walk you through that white paper that we read from our physicist. Here it's happening, right as I went to do a thumbnail from Helios Viewer, we're getting the same effect right now, you guys. The effect where they're trying to block part of what's going on next in, in SDO and an apparent discharge here. It freaked me out so bad that I had to call my good friend, Wayne Steiger. Hey, Wayne. Hey, Steve. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. So I'm showing it to you live as I'm seeing it. Paper. I have. I absolutely have. And so you understand that we might be seeing another discharge, which indicates a uh, object near the sun, right? It would appear so. Um, listen, something's going on up there. Uh, this is this is not an eclipse. So I think first thing we have to let everyone know that there is no lunar transit. There is no Venus transit. There's no transit that would account for the obfuscation that we're seeing. And, and Steve, the size of this coronal hole, have you seen that? Yeah, let me show it to you in a different angstrom. It shows it much clearer. Um, I think 193 is the best. Look at that thing pointing at us like a big monster. Yeah, in fact, go to the uh, three, go to the purple one. Um, yeah. That. No, that go one up. Well, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Which one is it? But no, still, I mean, look at what we got going oh, on. Oh, and see, folks, Steve, you know this. So if we were to take the land mass of that, uh, that's probably what would you say? Uh, four or five, this Earth size? Here's our Earth scale. Yeah. There you go. Look at the size of the obfuscation taking place. Yeah, I'm going to go back a couple frames so we can see some more of it. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step back in time 15 minutes at a time. <gasps> it comes from the other side as well. Look at that. My, my, my. I'm going to back it up a little bit. This seems to be the best angstroms to see the, this phenomenon that we're seeing. Try it in that. Can you get the purple? Look again. at that. Look at that. Look at how much it crunched up on the side. There it's being let go. SDO is having a heck of a time of it. Yeah, well, see, so we would be told that, uh, all right, so we would be told by our physicists that it's being grabbed over here, right? Mm -hmm. And then in this picture, it's being let go. <laughs> this is what our physicist says. And it's being grabbed there. Oh, Wayne, Wayne. Well, so, so, you know, to cause this, you're going to have to have a mass much larger than our sun. I mean, they're not, and I'm not going to buy this, that there's an object that's in front of the uh, camera uh, of the SDO, and this is what's causing this. You know, that's what they're going to say. It would appear, okay, let's do this. Let me go back to the beginning of the phenomenon, and let's see if it would indicate an object passing by the sun. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to stay calm because this is really disturbing footage, you guys. I mean, from a, as somebody who's been learning a lot about the sun lately, and uh, Wayne, you too, right, uh, with our, mm -hmm. and our people that are helping us, when you see stuff like this, it freaks you out a little. It gives you a little stunner. All right, so I think that gives us, gets us clean here. Let's make sure by going okay. All right, so here what we're going to do is just walk through. Starting at 1144 UTC on 1026. For the record, Earth scales right next to it there. It seems that the sun dims bright or brightened right prior to it, and then we have the large obfuscation to the right. Mm -hmm. Then it's to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So then again, top to bottom motion. And then it's coming around the bottom because they obfuscate that. I can't explain it. Do you, do you see that? Look at the bottom of the sun. Do you see that dark mark that was there? On this you'll see, there you go. You see, it, you see it down there? This one? Yeah. Look at that region.
I mean, I mean, that's obviously a coronal hole that's coming through, but it's just so defined. You rarely see it at the bottom of the poles. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. just. I'm just going to go back to the one frame where you noticed it. See, look at how it takes out that, like it, it's yeah. some kind of a, I, need, I don't even know what to say. Probably some type of an energy phenomenon would be my guess. Oh, look at that, Wayne. Ed is dead. Ed is dead. They zapped him, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. And man, they're still kicking his butt. Now, you know, I want to tell you, <clears throat> we're going to be getting more into this, Steve. Because you see, I think that there is a frequency that is, I know this sounds a little far-fetched, but I believe every star, every planet has a frequency, right? right? Imagine if we could tune in to the sun's frequency look at and that. look at that. Because that would tell us, you know, these coronal holes, <clears throat> they're becoming more numerous. Um, I saw the one today, like you're showing here. I was real concerned, and I think it was in the next level of the spectrum. It's whatever the purple gives us. Uh, you can really see the definition of the depthness. And, I mean, that's just raw energy heading to Earth. I mean, talk about DNA recalibration. Uh, oh, this one blocked completely. Look at that. They ain't going to let you see anything. Not in that angstrom. <laughs> Say, hey, Jack. Well, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is just consistent with what, uh, what we just, like I said, what I made in part one before I, I contacted you, Wayne. I just wanted to make sure that, that this is the hole that everybody's talking yeah. about. Yeah. And in fact, Ben did a good segment on this this morning on SO. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah, even he's a little concerned. I mean... As we all should be, this, there was a power company warning. So basically, I did a, uh, a little segment on the star who had written that the power companies had been warned, Wayne, that this is happening. And, um, you know, so there you go. Well, and I think, too, Steve, we're, we're realizing as well is that, what was it? It spiked up to 1,100 kilometers per second. And, you know, our atmosphere and magneto shield can only protect us so much, Steve. And the well, huge... Yeah, that's the disturbing yeah. thing. I'm trying to go to the solar dynamics of uh, the integrated space. Ah, there we go. There. No, that's not, not that one. Come on. Where's that purple one? It's what? No. Is there, there another one? one on here that combines all of them. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it gives it in that purple uh, shift of light. Nothing meaningful here, I don't think. Other than we're seeing a pattern on the magneto ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nothing. The, the little globules are an uh, interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing to see here. But I like the magneto ground view here. I, I don't think uh -huh. I've ever seen anything around the sun like that before. So I can get it to switch here. So it's easy to get. Oh, what the? <laughs> you see that? Are you seeing that? <laughs> It looks like no, a, it looks like a game of. Uh, do you remember Space Invaders? Oh, I do, I do. <laughs> if I had a tenth of the quarters that I had spent, I'd be singing "Fiddler on the Roof." A rich man, a rich man, I am. Look at this. I mean, this does look something like like something is definitely reaching out and touching the sun. It, it's the, all right. So we had that huge uh, CME. Uh, that released on the back side of the sun and just enormous is the mob attacking again perhaps but uh we can't i i think we're gonna have to look at sechi uh, uh, but anyway this is the beginning yeah. not the end yes. of the investigation everybody i just wanted to get wayne on get his thoughts we do have a huge coronal hole our sun seems to be discharging from all quarters of it in some strange way heads up really this is probably a good time to throw some of your electronics in your faraday cage would be my would be my best advice to you good training